Hi, I'm Caitlin from GS1 US. Let's talk about the GS1 company prefix. Whether you just licensed one or are considering it, this quick start guide might help answer some of your questions. I'm going to walk you through the process of creating UPC barcodes and show you just how easy it is to get started on our Data Hub platform. When you license your GS1 company prefix, you have the ability to download your very own certificate that helps tie you as the brand owner to your products. Your retail partners may ask for this to approve your listing, and it can be a helpful tool should the product's authenticity ever come into question. In addition to showing your GS1 company prefix and your UPC company prefix, the certificate shows your account number, which is important if you ever have to contact GS1 US member support. And it also shows your entity global location number, or GLN, which is a special number that identifies your company's location. After you submitted your payment in our store, you should have received an email that provides your company prefix number and access to two GS1 US platforms. GS1 US Data Hub, where you will manage your product information and create your barcodes, and My GS1 US, where you can manage your contact information and company settings. And both are accessible with the same login. You can download the prefix certificate that I just showed you on either Data Hub or My GS1 US. This video will focus mainly on what you can do in GS1 US Data Hub. In this video, we'll show you how to create your own UPCs, which first involves assigning GTINs, or Global Trade Item Numbers, to your products. Sometimes people ask us, what does that mean exactly? A UPC, or Universal Product Code, is the name for a barcode used in the United States. It's the actual lines and spaces seen here. The GTIN is the unique identification number. It can be encoded into a UPC barcode, and that's what a barcode scanner reads. And also the GTIN can be used on its own as an identifier to create a product listing for online marketplaces. There are three parts of a GTIN. The UPC company prefix, which GS1 US licenses only to you. And this is what's registered to your company and is the basis for your GTINs. Then the item reference, which you assign yourself in Data Hub, that identifies the particular product. And the check digit, a final digit calculated from the other digits, which is used to check that the data has been correctly composed. You do not need to calculate the check digit yourself. Our platform, GS1 US Data Hub, does that automatically using GS1 Logic and GS1 Calculators. I think it's really important to understand early on that you will need a different GTIN for every size, color, flavor, and other type of variation. And you can't use a GTIN that's already assigned to one product for a new product. We don't want your product to be confused for someone else's in retailer systems, and you want to make sure that your customers get the product that they asked for. Here are a few examples starting at the top left corner. You may need to assign GTINs to cases and not just individual products. And if I'm in apparel, I would need to assign GTINs to different shirt sizes and the colors that those sizes come in. If I'm in CPG, I need to assign GTINs to different flavors, and we're showing grape and orange here. And if I have products that are similar, but they have different functionality, like this TV example at the bottom right corner, I'll need to assign different GTINs. And remember, you can't add GTIN capacity to an existing prefix. If you run out, you will need to license a new prefix, so make sure you estimate your capacity wisely. Now that you understand the components of a GTIN, let's go into Data Hub. This is a very high-level overview, so I want you to know that we have a lot of helpful resources on Data Hub available directly through the Help tab. This is what it looks like when you log into Data Hub. Notice below that we have a graphic representation of how many GTINs have been used already. We're going to show you how to get your barcodes by clicking Create Your Barcodes toward the top. After you clicked Create or Manage Barcodes, you land here, and we're going to click Add New Product. This is the basic product information screen, step one, if you look at the steps listed to the far right of the screen. Fill in your product description, your brand name, your industry. You can even add an internal SKU number to help you with your inventory management. I filled in some sample information here so you can see what it looks like. If you're assigning this GTIN to one individual product, you can leave this as the default each packaging level, and the other default settings can stay. But please consult the Data Hub Help Center to understand more about these packaging levels beyond the basic each setting. Click Save and continue to move on. Here. And now we're at step two. For those starting out with a basic product setup, we recommend that you select Let Us Assign Your GTIN. You'll see the middle part of the screen will deliver your GTIN in gray text. You'll notice you're still in draft as it says across the top. When I click Save and Continue, I'll be changing into pre-market mode. It's important to realize which step you're in because after pre-market, I'm going to review everything and make sure it's final before I set this to in use. 
After that, I won't be able to make any changes. On the next screen, step three, you'll see pre-market at the top of the page. In steps three and four, you can add more data points so your retailers understand more about your product. And at this point, you can either set to in use, if you see the buttons on the right of the screen here, or I can select view barcode. So let's click that. I'm still in pre-market, so the barcode has a watermark across it, and that'll go away once I set it to in use. You have the option to download in multiple formats, either EPS or PNG. Most users will keep the default setting of retail point of sale in order to get their UPCA barcodes. I also want to point out that we have a network of solution partners that are available to help you with additional barcode needs like printing and verification. So check out the listing here that's available. To go back and review my final details and set this in use, I'm going to click Edit Product. After I go back and add weight, weights and dimensions and I set my product to in use, uh, I'm going to go to the next screen to view barcode and here's my barcode. I'm ready to use it on my products. Thank you for joining me today. We wish you continued success with your business. Remember, we have a wide variety of educational webinars, videos, and courses to help you understand how to use your prefix and understand the system of GS1 standard. Also, our member support team is ready to assist you with any questions. Don't hesitate to contact us Monday through Friday, 8 to 6 p.m. Eastern, or you can email us at info at gs1us.org. Thank you.